My name is Bobby Davis, and I love developing learning solutions. Usually that comes in the form of e-learning, such as micro-learning or burst training, uh, or even app development. Uh, but one of the tools I've loved to use uh, is Captivate. And Captivate 8 most recently is definitely no exception. I really enjoy the responsive web design they've added to it. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I have come to not like so much about Captivate is just the quizzing feature. It causes an unfavorable user experience sometimes when a user might go back and watch a course again that's existing in an LMS. Uh, so I've developed my own custom knowledge checks to use in courses. Um, now we can do that in Captivate quite easily. Um, in fact, I'm going to be uh, assuming we understand a few things in Captivate. Uh, if you don't, I will be mentioning a resource that I've used a lot to learn about Captivate through the years. In Captivate, uh, you can quite easily develop a button. Uh, I just selected a rectangle shape and drag one on screen. And over here, you see I can use as button. Now you can go through and style the button if you want to. You'll notice there's a normal down rollover state. Um, and you can also even disable those if you don't want to worry about those. But what I've done here is I've developed uh, a few buttons just from rectangles. And you see when I roll over them, they do have a state change. And when you click down on them, they have a slightly different state change. So in custom knowledge checks, you can type your question and then have as many answers beneath it as you'd like. And the way this works quite nicely in Captivate is when you click a button, you can select for it to have different messages that pop up, such as a success, a failure, or a hint. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing because for the correct answer and is a success statement, and for the wrong answer is a success statement. Well, the reason that is, uh, it's telling me that I have correctly clicked on the button. This, what message pops up when I successfully click on the button? Uh, so for selecting the wrong answer to this question, uh, you could say I successfully clicked on the wrong answer. So, but to get any message to pop up when the button is clicked, you need to select the, uh, that display. And starting from scratch, um, the buttons don't have any messages. And when you turn it on, it doesn't, I like changing mine a little bit. So I'm gonna style mine here. I'm gonna make it transparent. I'm going, this is a wrong answer. So I'm gonna make the font red. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And then this is an incorrect answer. And I'm going to align this just a little bit because I'm a little OC. Okay, I'm a lot OC. And now we have it matching the button. And I'm going to align it to the next, the message I had above. Another thing I like about Captivate 8 is these guides in here. And then I'm going to align it to the right. I don't want it to the far right, so I'm going to go to the margins, and I'm going to add a 10-point margin on there to scoot it out just a little bit. Okay, now I've got a pretty nice look on one. Uh, and now, if I if I have you know more than one wrong answer, I just copy this button and paste it down there, and now I have a couple wrong answers. Uh, nice thing about this is. Uh, once I select a, uh, once I create one of these, I can go through and just duplicate this slide, and then and now I've got two knowledge checks. You know, knowledge check one, and now this one is knowledge check two. And you can either go back through and style these with the same with those the font color like we looked at earlier, uh, or you can actually drag and drop the buttons if whichever one you think is easier. Now. One thing, when you're clicking on the buttons, this is something I noticed is a little bit squirrely in Captivate 8, and I'm hoping it's fixed in a new release. Uh, when I, if I'm asking the question with an audio track, um, when I click on the button, I want the audio track to stop. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is on the button, I'm going to click on options, and I want to stop slide audio. But 
real quick, let's look at the buttons. This one, this one, and this one all have stop slide, slide audio unchecked. When I check on one of them, it shows the others are checked, but I found that they're not really in my experience. And so what I do is I, I make sure I, I, uh, click on, I click off and on to make sure that each button actually has that. While we're talking about audio, these little messages we were talking about earlier, you can actually add an audio clip to that message that pops up. And so when the message pops up, you can also have, uh, I would encourage it to be brief, but a brief explanation of why that is, maybe not the correct answer, but definitely have a brief explanation of why that is the incorrect answer. Uh, and so that's one, uh, one feature I've really been able to capitalize on in making my custom knowledge checks. Now I did make some assumptions and that you knew some basics on Captivate. Uh, maybe you're watching this video and you don't, so I want to point you to uh, my teachers, uh, the great Google and the great YouTube. <laughs> I've learned a lot just on there. But another resource I've found extremely helpful for all Adobe Suites is uh, Adobe Know How. <clears throat> now I don't work for them. Uh, I don't get any money for this. I just, I just like using them. Um, so you could go on and type in Captivate here and you'll see all of the resources available on Captivate. And I think the one I've taken for Captivate specifically was, what's new in uh, Adobe Captivate 8? You can see I've just watched the beginning to just learn some of the new features. Uh, but I highly encourage checking out Adobe Know How. It's been a great resource and uh, happy developing.